What's good, y'all? So the story for me for the past couple of months has been shadow work, right? Now, before we go down the rabbit hole, let me go ahead and define my at least my level of understanding of what shadow work is for the newbies out there and even for the experts that can put me on game because I, I consider myself somewhere in the middle, but closer to the newbie side, you know, closer to the newbie side. I'm learning things just like you, you know what I mean? But shadow work, if I could summarize it, shadow work is pretty much you going within your mind, your soul, your spirit, your very being to go out there or go in there inwardly to clear out all of that negative, heavy, mucky gunk that has been like, you know, placing itself all over your spirit. Just a little bit, just a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. Sometimes it's dense, sometimes it's light, you know. Shadow work is probably the most important thing that you have to do in your spiritual journey, right? You have to. Now, some people, like for me, I do things in bulk. You know, I go through periods of shadow work, which in this case was months. Usually it's just a week. Usually it's a month of it, and I just go live life. You know, I'm always tailoring it, blah, blah, blah. But this one, I had to go deep because I was going through stuff that means something big manifested in my world, and I don't like it. So I had to go in deep to figure out what it was, and we'll get to that in a little bit. You know, I figured out a lot about myself. You figure out a lot about yourself in shadow work. The, 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 the problem is, it's like in the spiritual community specifically, a lot of people, they'll get their singing bowls. They'll get their crystals. They'll stop wearing certain materials. They'll start eating better. They'll start grounding. They'll start sun gazing, sun bathing, you know, mantras, mudras, affirmations. You're doing all that stuff that makes you so powerful. Yoga, stretching, exercise. You're doing everything you should be doing. But one of the things that people tend to ignore the most is the shadow work. Why? Because it can get very, very painful. It can. But sometimes you have to go through that pain in order to heal. So you don't keep on dealing with the same little steady level of pain anymore. Sometimes you have to rip the band-aid off. Sometimes you have to slowly peel the band-aid off. It's like, ow, ah, ah, ah. I'm good now. You know what I'm saying? And that's shadow work. You got to go through the pain the same way that you say feel the burn when you're in the gym. You got to feel the pain in the spiritual astral realms or the internal dimensions or whatever. All right. There's certain words and terminology that are above my degree of understanding. But nevertheless. Right. So let's get get into my story a little bit. One of the things that like propelled me into this, like, you know, like in, I put the video out my low nights where I've gotten emotional in a couple of my videos and stuff was simply the fact that I had lost my job, right? Now, for me, I actually was never too pressed on the fact that I lost my job. It wasn't the job. The job is the physical. The job is the material. I'm not worried about that. If there's something that you don't like in your material world, your physical incarnation right now, that means that that has already transpired due to a belief or a little thought form that has taken taken form. Like I said, you can manifest bad things just as easily as good things, you know, but some people get so high and mighty that they think that they, they don't have to check themselves. And sometimes the universe, God, Buddha, Allah, whoever it is that you pray to pray within the, the one, the all, the mind, the, the one being the one thing, all these words for the same shit that we want to sit and argue about here anyway. It's like, sometimes they got to send you a little lesson. But hey, hey, oh, you think you learned it all, huh? All right, one second, hold on. Here you go. And now your world's dread. You're like, how did this happen? Because you got to go in deep and you have to pull things up by the root. That is the point of shadow work. A lot of people say, I did this and I have cleansed. I have meditated and I've got my answers. You got an answer you get you to use improper english you got a singular answer you got a answer you know but you didn't get all of the answers maybe there's more than one answer more than maybe there's one, more than one component necessary for your healing you know that's why you always need to go in deep and ask yourself what can i fix what can i improve upon but anyway you know the main problem why people keep repeatedly they, they like things go good for a little bit of time they go good for a little bit and then they then it seems like everything just hits rock bottom. How did this happen? I've had an abundance mindset. How could I have lost my job? How could I have? 
because you failed to get rid of a small problem early on, a thought form that maybe you took in inadvertently or something that you believed and you've been lying to yourself over and over until you started to believe the lie, whatever it was, the original thing took form and manifested in your world. Now, like I said, I wasn't too stressed about losing my job because with the whole COVID thing, and we'll talk about that in a separate video, I knew that there was just like a, like it was like a stopwatch, a timer, like the, the sands and the hourglass were falling at my time at this particular company. I knew it. So that's why I put like quite literally, I put in minimal effort at the end because I knew no matter what I did, it was going to, it was going to be gone. And that came to fruition, you know? So that wasn't even the problem for me, but the problem was like, I was I, I I came face to face with the fact that like I I simply don't know even though I have an abundance and wealth mindset and I'm all about taking things in and learning and like you know forming it into my own world I realized that there's been well there was a few like in, in the come up like during this whole process but like overall before this whole event it's like I got comfortable. You know, I got a steady flow of income. I can basically get what I want. I'm a little bit limited. I'm not in the place where I want to be, but, you know, I think there's more that I can do. So I go manifest better for myself. And one of the things that, like, really stood out to me was a lesson, one of the lectures from Neville, Neville Goddard. You know, he's the way he's like, one of, he's like, well, I call him my first spiritual teacher. Of course, there was people that got me here along the way, and they, you're teachers in your own right. But this is the first person that I said, no, I'm not leaving. Teach me. And one of the things that he was talking about was like, you know, if you're trying to manifest wealth, for example, wealth and abundance and all that type of stuff, one of the things that might transpire in your world, and I'm going to talk about this in a different video too, but like one of the things that might happen in your world is that you might manifest the exact opposite, right? Because it's that adversity, it's that obstacle, obstacle that obstacle that once you overcome it, then you will see your reward on the other side. So when you are manifesting, sometimes you are manifesting a challenge. And once you uh, 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 defeat or uh, uh, overcome that challenge, you will be rewarded. That's just certain ways, depending on how your life is structured. And you can always change this as well. But nevertheless, I'm getting too far ahead of myself. This is a manifestation video yet. <laughs> but that lesson stood out to me because even though I was going through the dark things and even though I was having doubts and worries, in the back of my head, one of his teachings, one of his affirmations that he shared was, I have a lavish, steady, dependable income, consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. Even though I was watching my, my pockets just boom, chunk, rent, boom, rent, boom, rent. I was like, yo, I can't keep this up for much longer i was like yo neville hey yo help out bro like i i get it we're manifesting and sometimes the obstacles come but like yo like it was good like give me a dollar like i hey yo <laughs> you know what i'm saying so one of the things that i came face to face with was my and i'm i feel like i'm gonna talk about all this but it's all just i'm seeing how all of it was intertwined together it was like I, I came face to face with me even having to ask the questions, do I still believe manifestation works? Do I believe the law of attraction is conditional or unconditional? Because when you're going through it, it feels like, oh, so I have to be doing something different for this to work because I don't understand how I attracted this. You know, this is like the like when you start to question your own beliefs. And I do believe everyone, no matter how comfortable you are in your beliefs, you should always question it because you'll find more questions. And, and when you find more questions, you'll get more answers. You know, you'll find out that something that you used to believe that you scrapped is actually something that you, that you need to return to. And something that you feel like that you've been believing your entire life, you'll find out, wait, this has actually been holding me back. My belief in such and such is actually why I can't find this and that. Oh, and that's why for some people it's so hard because we form an attachment to our beliefs. And these things could be negative thought forms that attach themselves to our psyches. What's the difference between being connected and attached? Connecting, I use the, the example of connecting, I use magnets. Magnets, boom, positive, negative, masculine, feminine, boom, they connect. And when is their time? Boop. You know, you snap them apart, boop, done. You know, or you peel it off the refrigerator, right? 
But if there's like, you know, the examples of Velcro, you know, you put them together, but then when you tear it apart, one side is not as powerful as it used to be, AKA like the soft woolly side, because all Velcro is, is just like little hooks. If you go look at what Velcro is, it's just little hooks. So when it gets into the wool and it pulls, that's what you're hearing. You're hearing all that, like all the little curls, like detaches and then over time the woolly fluffy part gets all you know all it gets fluffier and it doesn't it doesn't stick to the velcro as well so when you're attached to something you have to pull something away and something gets hurt in the process sometimes it's you sometimes it's whatever you're attached to like in the event of relationships and stuff you know someone did you dirty you got cheated on now you believe that all men and women are trash because of one person or even five people's behavior and you have allowed that to take root in your mind and now because of one person you now think that a whole half of the population you know just you know give or take you know half of the population is terrible disgusting and blah 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 then you decide to go gay and then you realize that the girls you dating the guys you dating are still assholes so wait a minute so which one is true because i now like i i knew this before but even now after all this the truth don't change so maybe it's the common denominator. Everything that's, it, that had to do with all those relationships you've been in, the con common denominator is you. That's why shadow work is so important. It figures out where your energy has gone, what you have allowed to manifest, right? What has taken root in your mind? And shadow work is going in and removing things by the root so then you can move freely, right? One of the biggest things that I, have, I came face to face with was something that was actually really obvious you know but one of the things that I, I i consistently return to is like i always tell people you know i am a lover i really am i'm always waiting for that beautiful queen goddess that beautiful woman queen goddess to show up into my life and make herself known you know what i'm saying until then i'm grinding and i'm making myself the best version of myself for when i run into you whoever you are if you're watching this video hit me up hi <laughs> but no seriously <laughs> you know and I wondered, like, you know, I sit back sometimes. I like, I mean, I take my own advice. I got butt ass naked in the mirror and I was just talking to myself. I was like, yo, I look at me in the mirror and I, I damn near fall in love. Physically, I am tall, dark and handsome. I am a beautiful creature walking this plane. I mean, physically, I'm beautiful. You may have your own opinions. I don't give a shit what you think about me. When I look in the mirror, I see a nice looking young man. <laughs> you feel me like i know i look good but that i don't really focus on that too much okay i look good all right what's next what's holding me back clearly it's not looks i'm six foot two tall dark and handsome and like long walks on the beach wink wink nudge nudge i'm playing all right but i was like why am i still single i'm smart i'm intelligent i'm you know i'm driven i'm compassionate i'm all these things like why has no woman made herself known in my world and sometimes it's like, you know, you can look at the physical, oh, oh, you don't, I don't hang out in bars. I don't go to places where people typically hang out because I'm a hermit. I'm a loner. That's what I am. But then one of the big things, I know there's more to figure out with it, but one of the biggest things that came, became very clear to me is I'm ready to love somebody. But for a long time, I hadn't given this thought. I wasn't ready to be loved yet. I wasn't ready to be loved loved i can do everything rub your feet you know I, i'm the type of dude that would have the rose petals when you come into the to the place they don't lead nowhere i just want you to feel special when you walk through the door you know what i'm saying i show my romantic side in a different way i do it's still my world but you know i just do things differently that throw a little curveball you know i'm the type of dude that'll just troll you you know you walk in my lady walks into the door got the rose petals. oh my god where does this lead to the kitchen hey can you wash those dishes for me you just what and like just to mess with you you know of course i'm not that misogynistic but i'll just make the joke from time to time just because you know what i'm saying it's like, this is how i get down i'm playful i'm goofy you know you never it's like, i'm like i'm very predictable but because i'm so predictable sometimes i know i need to throw a curveball i think this deep into it but i'm like i put this much thought into someone i'm not even dating yet so where is it in this world because i'm falling in love in the astral plane every goddamn night but when i wake up i remember that i'm single I wasn't ready to be loved yet. And some people, it's like, that sounds well, no shit. That's obvious. But for me, that was a, that was a very, you know, eye-opening thing for me. You know, it was just like, yo, 
I need to be, I said, okay, one, one uh, valve is open, but like, you know, the, the in valve and the out valve, the out valve is wide open, but the in valve is completely clogged up. That's what shadow work does. It clears that up for you, you know? And then when you like, when you get past a certain obstacle, then it's like you, everything starts flowing hunky dory into the next thing, right? And another one that I've been thinking about, and we'll talk about this in its own light, but like, you know, I had a, this one was a dream. This but this one didn't feel like a dream. It was a memory. And I always wondered, you know, why, why is it that no matter how much success I experience in life, like right now, I just hit a milestone of 1500 subscribers. You know, I took the sub count off because people care way too much about it. I'm just sharing it for the sake of get, painting the picture. It's like, I got that. You know, I got a new job that pays me significantly more. You know, um, um, right now I'm literally getting paid. Like, sure, they're 13 hour days and they're tiring in their own way. But I'm getting paid 13 hour days, like working 60 something hours, getting paid all this overtime for the first time in ever for like a long time. Like the first time, in like four years. But it still doesn't mean shit to me. OK, I got a new job. Yay. Y'all know how I feel about jobs and careers and stuff like that. Yay. But I'm getting paid more. So that's nice, I guess. You know, but then it just, it just never felt like it was good enough. I had a um, dream slash like me watching a memory from a past. And I, I, I shit you not, I shared this with some of my two of my closest friends. And I was like, yo, I was literally, literally sitting on a throne, you know, just chilling. And there was a performance. There was like a bunch of women dancing, nothing provocative, nothing like there was like women doing like almost like a tribal, like, you know, ceremonial dance thing. And through the context of the, the vision, I knew it was for me. It was in my honor. I knew that all this was for me. So am I living up to me being a king? Am I living up to my my name here in this incarnation being prince? Maybe. But when I woke up, I mean, I woke up not even like, what was that? No, I woke up like, that explains a lot. Because in my DNA, I still remember my royalty. You know, it's no exaggeration when I call us men and kings in my semen retention videos trying to raise men back up to our original stature, to the stuff that's built into our DNA. White, black, Asian, I don't give a shit. It's like, that's why I, I put so much effort into that. You know, and it's like, it's like that's why. Because I am royalty. And a second, another like a, 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 um, a tangential thought that I had with that one though was like, okay, but am I going to go start running around? I am royalty. Treat me as such. Not even. It just filled in a huge puzzle piece. Like it, like it was almost like a, a small puzzle in the midst of a huge puzzle that like I got that piece and I figured out something deep. This is what happens when you start to clear the, 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 the pipes of yourself. When you clear the gunk out of you, it allows the energy to flow, allows the information from the astrals, from the ether to flow through you more easily. And I get memories. That was a memory, not a dream, not a vision. That was a memory of me sitting on the throne and watching this performance go down. And these, all of these women were beautiful all shapes and shies, shapes and, shy, shy, shy. shapes and sizes. I mean, tall women, short women, skinny women, big women. But they were all beautiful. Every single one of them was worthy of being a wife. You know, all of them I consider queens and goddesses. When I was looking at them, I was more in awe of what I was surrounded by because, yes, it was a memory. But then it was also my current, my current mind watching it and forming forming uh, 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 conclusions about what was going on that I was seeing, you know? And like, I was just sitting there, I was like, yo, what the, who was I? Who am I? What, what the, and then I woke up and then like, I was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Shadow work is extremely important because, you know, when you go through it, you know, this is why like spiritual people get this high and mighty type of uh, stereotype thrown on us because we've gone through the work and when you are someone that's gone, and once again, shadow work happens over and over and over and over again until everything is cleared up. And by then you levitating and floating around and shit, teleporting and omnipresent and all that type of stuff. But it's like 
when you go through it, that's a challenge. That's a gauntlet that you've gone through. Like you got your stripes. Like in the military, you got your stripes. You got the badge. You got the thing that implies your rank. You're no longer a private. You're whatever comes after private. I don't know what it is. I don't know military stuff like that. But like whatever the next thing is, you got that thing. So privates now walk up to you and say, yes, sir. Insert rank here. Let's just say sergeant. I don't know what if that's high or low. I don't know. But nevertheless, yes, sergeant. Yes, sarge. You know, it's because they recognize that you've been in the military longer than them. You have higher qualifications than that individual. So when we in the spiritual community, don't get me wrong. I have a whole nother thought process on that. I'll probably record that after this. But like, it's like we know who has and who has not gone through these trials or even started them or even began them because you could just see it. It's kind of like saying like, you know, like, let's just say a rite of passage for young men and women is you must go hunt uh, an apex predator, a wolf, a tiger, a bear, goddamn shark, a whale. And every single time to prove that you've truly done, done this, you have to infl be inflicted by a scar, some type of scratch, right? I'm making all this type of stuff up. It's all th uh, hypothetical to get y'all see what I'm trying to get at. So like if you if you go against the, the bear, you're going to get the claw. You get the tiger, you get a different type of scratch. You go against the shark, you're going to see like the chomp out of, your, uh, out of your stomach. You know what I'm saying? But you overcame that and you defeated the animal. You defeated the beast. That was your rite of passage. So when you go back to your village, everyone's going to see that you got that scratch. You couldn't fake you can't fake it with your own javelin. You can't fake it with your own arrowhead. You can't stab yourself and be like, oh, I did it, guys. It's like, yo, you, you said you fought the shark, right? So where are the teeth? Where are the, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you fought the bear. Why is that slice so clear? Why, where, where's the, where's the, where's that? You know what I'm saying? It's like we in the spiritual, it's like the, we see that in people. And it's like, yo, you ain't working on yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's why people, like, especially my friends and family can admit, like, and I have no problem with them admitting this and saying this about me, that I get intense. You know? Because when people tell me I can't, I can't, I can't. No, you don't want to. You're telling me you can't, you can't. That's impossible. I did it. I've gone through it. And I'm trying to pass my information on to you because I have gone through it. You know, the, been without food and water, without contact with water for seven days. That's impossible. Your kidneys will shut down. Don't get me wrong. Some of y'all might. Because y'all don't have that willpower. Y'all have the belief that in four days your body's going to shut down. Therefore, it will. Because that's what you believe. Therefore, it shall be. You know, but for me, I said push through. There's something on the other side. There's something that they don't want you to see you here. That's how crazy I was. That's how driven I was. You know, so when people tell me they can't do shit, that bothers me. Because I know I've done it myself and I can see your limitation. It's almost like it's pasted over you like an almost like an invisible veil. And I can see that. That's part of one of my spiritual gifts that I'm starting to grow and I'm starting to feel more and more and see more and more in people. You know, I can see sadness. I can see depression. I can see repression, like repressed memories and stuff like that. I, can, I don't know particularly what it is, but I can see it in you. I'm like, you got you got work to do, of course. And I see the same thing when I look at myself in the mirror. But when I see a picture of myself before I've gone through all these trials and tribulations, I'll accomplish all these goals and feats and stuff. Like There was a picture of my mom. My mom took a picture of me while I was asleep when, uh, when I lived back in North Carolina. And even when I was sleeping, you could see black bags under my eyes because I knew I was going through it so if I were to be face to face with that version of me I would be like damn you going through it homie and some people are just oblivious to it in that regard oh I didn't see anything wrong with him suicidal thoughts who would have thought of that I will never guess that from him you can't see it pasted on these people you know, for like people that have gone through the things, you know, that have healed from certain things, for people that have healed from depression, you know what depression looks like. For people that have suffered from anxiety, you know, and you've healed and moved past that, or someone that's still like me in the process, like, you know, dealing with it when it does arise, it's like you can see it in other people. But once again, you as the individual made the decision to go within yourself to figure out what is it that you need to fix? What limiting beliefs do you have? So then when you are looking at other people, that's where I get I get frustrated because it's like, yo, there's a better version of you on the other side. You don't have to believe in everything I believe. You don't have to take in everything I say as law. I don't want you to. I want you to question me, question my knowledge on a topic because you'll find out I don't know as much on something as I thought I did. And now we're both learning things and passing information to, get to, to amongst one another. But when you see this and people just choose to live in there to dwell 
in their in their 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 little cesspool of self pity, limiting beliefs that are stopping them from doing things. I know I still have limiting beliefs, but like you know, when I shake past them, sometimes you test some things out. You but know, okay, for example, like some uh, I, I don't see myself ever doing, but like you know, like a strip club. You know, that could be a limiting belief. I might find a huge life lesson that I can bring back to the world. Yo, I went to a strip club the other day. And yes, there was titties and ass cheeks shaking and all that type of stuff. But, like, it made me think about something completely different. You know, blah, 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 blah. But you don't know till you find out. But that's one of those things. There's certain levels of pleasure. There's certain levels of things. I'd be like, eh, I think I'm good. But who knows? You know, five years from now, I might get dragged into one and be like, oh, yo, bro, I'm like, yeah, that wasn't as bad. That was actually quite enjoyable. Do I see myself being here every single day? Fuck no. But it's like, this was nice. I don't feel as un uncomfortable, you know, and I'm just, I just threw that example out there. But nevertheless, you know, it's like you have to be brave enough to confront, you know, what hurt you in the past, Right. Now, I cannot speak from experience on this, you know, but like if you had that uncle, that auntie that did some things to you that the rest of the family don't know about, you know, by being by the boom. It's like that's the type of stuff that you are going to have to come face to face with. You are going to come face to face with that person that assaulted you, that person that harmed you, that person that belittled you for years. And you are going to put a version of them in front of you in your mind or you could draw a goddamn stick figure and yell at that piece of paper. You know, but nevertheless, the, the, the best thing that you have to do, and it sounds crazy, you know, but it's like sometimes, sometimes you have to forgive that doesn't mean you have to go to love the person. That doesn't even mean you have to like them afterwards. But it's like, you know what? I'm no longer going to allow what you did to me to affect my life anymore. I'm not going to. You don't even have to have this conversation with them in real life. Sometimes that helps. Sometimes that gives you the bravery to do it in real life. But once again, you are the source. Everything comes from you. So if you project a version of them in your mind you go into meditation or you go for a walk and all you're doing is walking side by side with them or you, they're sitting across from you at the table or whatever and you say everything that you want to say to them in real life fuck you you stupid motherfucker you fucking killed me you fucking almost killed me you did this to me you fucking did ah! feel all of feel it again as if it was day one let it all bubble up let it come bubble up and let it come out and then when you're done, just imagine that person not affected at all. Imagine them with this, the same face as Sock Monkey. Just you said everything. In real life, they'd probably be crying. In real life, they will probably stormed off. In real life, I'm not going to take this. In real life, oh, you're just a child. What do you know? In real life, they may have said all that type of stuff. But in your mind, see them as blank. Just after you get all of your emotions out. You forgive. You got to. Like I said, you don't have to go like them after this. You don't have to go be buddy, buddy. You don't have to go be chums. You don't even have to go reestablish your friendship. You just like once again, people can take this further or less than what I do. But like, you know, have that conversation. Say what you got to say and be like, OK, now that I'm back, how do I feel? Did that do this? Do we need another session of that? Do we need to do it again? Or can I actually be around this individual and not feel that same level of hatred anymore that I that I held for so long? Because hatred is a very strong feeling. It's a very heavy feeling. Hatred is not the opposite of love. It's love and hate. No, it's love and fear. Now, hatred is a step above fear, like not much because hatred in my world is a byproduct of fear. And once again, fear can express itself in different ways. We're not going to get too deep into it. But nevertheless, that heavy, heavy, heavy vibration, that low vibration of hatred, fear, uh, uh, anxiety, jealousy, whatever the words are, you know, like let's use jealousy for, as another example. You know, you're like it's like, you know, for those of you that watch Dragon Ball Z, Goku and Vegeta, um, for those of you that don't watch TV and cartoons like that, you have that friend that's always just like running into it. Oh, yo, I just made 10 grand the other day. And you're just sitting here like the other day. 
and you form this level of jealousy to this to this person. It's like someone that seems to just naturally get things, someone that just just seems to just be better than you at every step, and you get pissed off at that. Sure, you tried to lie to yourself and say, "Oh, it's just friendly competition." Oh, uh, but say, "Yo, what the hell? Why are you always seeming like you don't have to work as hard as me?" Then that, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes that could be a limiting belief because you don't see what they're doing in their free time as well. You don't know who their mentors are. You don't know the type of like, you know, the, the, the paradigm that they live in. You don't know that. Or they could just be stupid freaking lucky and that's just their vibes. You know what I'm saying? And you're carrying on all this, this hatred towards someone that doesn't even know you feel like that towards them. Why? Why are you hating towards them? That's why I think the second part of it is actually addressing them. Seeing if you like, hey, look, like, don't do the, all the yelling in person, you know, if, if it's not necessary, depending on the situation. But in regards to jealousy, it's like, yo, how do you always come out on top like that? Like, I, I got to be honest with you. I feel jealous when I'm around you. Like, I, I feel true jealousy. I'm grinding. I'm working hard. And I wait. I make eight hundred dollars a month. But somehow you're my friend, but you make this much money. How are you even staying in my, why do you hang around me? Does it, is it to humble yourself? Is it to remind you what, like, I don't want to be that. And he's like, oh, I had no clue how little bit of money you made. Uh, do you want to talk to some of my mentors and I can get you into doing what I'm doing? And you'd be like, like, you know, just by you letting go of all that hatred that you had towards somebody, you can now elevate and be like, oh, we can be teammates or we can be partners or wow i had a whole different image of you because the image that you create for someone is the only thing that they can be in your world it's the only thing that you, they can be in your world that's going to be another video <laughs> but it's like and, but I'll, I'll continue with that thought though it's like if you have someone that no matter what i mean from day one you walked into the office you didn't like Susan, you didn't like Susan. She looks like she gossips. And oh my God, I can't tell her my business. Oh my God, she's wearing that blouse. Oh my God, with those pants. Oh my God, I just couldn't imagine you doing that. You formed this whole opinion without saying a single word to somebody. Therefore, if Susan brings you a, a morning muffin, if Susan brings you even your favorite coffee, your favorite freaking Starbucks, a uh, mocha frappuccino, three squirts of whipped cream, uh, two shots of vanilla, and uh, 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 a smiley face heart made of chocolate. Chocolate, chocolate syrup on top. She brought you that because she heard you order it so many times. You in your world of your perception of her, you will sit here and you will be like, oh my God, look at her. She's just trying to do this to become friends with me. Ew, she's trying to be nice. Meanwhile, this whole time, Susan's been a freaking angel. She's been, she's just been doing her day. She likes to make people happy. But you came to this conclusion about her that may or may not have been true, but you will never figure that out until you actually have the bravery to number one, deal with how you see somebody. You know, I try to see my, uh, see people in their highest good. If they don't want to, if they don't want to step up to the frame, then I see you in your lowest state. I just see things for as it is, but your highest level, your highest potential is it's there. It's right there. It's up to you as the individual to uncover it. Sometimes you got to climb out. Sometimes you have to soar to higher heights. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't realize that they're underground right now. You want to be flying around in the clouds, but mentally you're stuck in the, you're stuck in the dirt. You're stuck in the mud. You got to climb out of the mud. You got to walk before you can run, right? Well, you got to get on solid ground before you can run to take off. Don't you, you know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> it's like, that's just how I look at things, man. And a lot of this comes from the shadow work that we put in, in the spiritual community for people that are on the, the truth seekers out there. It's like, because then you get a whole new level of truth. You know, it's like, you know, uh, 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 like a lot of people say like clean eating, you know, it's like, oh, clean eating, oh, veganism. Oh, that's stupid. Oh, oh God, look at those freaking vegans. They're trying to take me away from what I like. They're trying to make me weak. They don't, they don't want me to get protein. That's how they take over the world. As people have said about vegans, you know what I'm saying? But then when you start to actually study it and as your vibration rises, it tends to, it's like, I wouldn't say it's a direct correlation because there are some spiritual people that could do crazy things and all this type of stuff that are more powerful than me that still eat meat, they still drink, they still do whatever. But in my path, as I looked at this, it's 33, 33, that's kind of dope. But like as, but as in my path, it's like for me, clean eating is paramount. I need to be eating nothing but fruits and vegetables. You know what I'm saying? It's like I even cheated and I got some Thai food and I found out afterwards that they were egg noodles. But once again, eh, whatever, I enjoy this. But then I was constipated. My stomach, I could like all the all following days, just like my stomach didn't hurt. It was just like it just felt uncomfortable. And that is what the very definition of disease, disease. 
ease. I was in a diseased state by eating something that is not uh, uh, conducive to my health. You know what I'm saying? So with me, it's like in my worldview, it's like I eat foods full of life force energy. Yes, I do eat cooked veggies and like I'll have like a plant based. Once again, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but plant based burgers and all that type of stuff. But like, you know, for the most part, though, I feel pretty good and satiated. Like last night, my dinner was a handful of walnuts and a, an entire watermelon. I just cut the thing in half and got a spoon and just eat uses the, the, the husk of the watermelon as a bowl, you know. But then as people like go from meat eaters, like, oh, you're disgusting to vegans. I'm not like saying like ranking or anything like that. But as they rise and rise, Guys, meat eating is this the way. I need meat. Shout out to my dad. I need meat. If there's no meat in the, in the food, uh. <laughs> I always mess with my dad like that. But then, as you start to rise, my like, damn. When I got rid of the meat and I got rid of all that uric acid that's like been like uh, like like bombarding my body. Wow, I have more energy. How about I eat a little bit less? Wow, when I when I go, I cut back to two meals a day. I, I feel a little bit better. Let me try one meal a day. Oh my gosh, why do I have so much energy? Sure, it sucked in the process of getting here. Oh man, I'm just gonna eat raw fruits and vegetables now. And you rise up past that to fruitarian juice 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 person, uh, breatharian, all that type of stuff. You just living all cosmic energy. That's the stuff I'm rising towards. But right now, I'm just I'm cool right here. You know, I have my little cheats here and there. I have my healthy spells. You know what I'm saying? But this all comes from me getting rid of old limiting beliefs that no longer serve me or at the very least being willing to step out of my comfort zone because i gone through this type of crap all this shadow work and dealing with repressed memories and, and bad memories and all this type of stuff this can't be as scary so it doesn't hurt to try if i feel like i'm about to die by being vegan then i'll just backtrack very simple it, but for me i haven't felt the need to backtrack but our lives are different you might go back you may not you know but you'll never know until you know yourself. Very simple. This whole point of this life is to learn about yourself. Yes, be assistance of other people. Be a positive influence in other people's lives so they can learn about themselves through you and another reflections because we are all reflections of one another. White, black, I don't care. It's like we are all reflections of one another. And if you are seeing nothing but hatred being shot back at you, what, either either that's that person's individual problem that they are a person full of hate or there is hatred in you that is being reflected back. You know, it's like when you grow and grow and grow, the things that people get bothered with, the triggering words, the insensitive words, they just bounce off of you. You can't offend me. I'm unoffendable. You can annoy the crap out of me. Oh, don't get me wrong. Let's not get it messed up. But you can't offend me. You know, you can call me the a hard ER. It, uh, I'd be like, oh, oh, you hate yourself. Oh, women are stupid. Oh, my God, men. Oh, you don't love yourself yet. And you're projecting on the other people. Oh, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not that condescending, but just for the sake of that the sake of that point, you know, once you grow and you level up past that, it's like you getting offended by something has to do with your beliefs. And then when you get that emotionally perturbed by something, that means you have an attachment to a certain belief. And when someone doesn't believe what you believe in, that shows that you are you are quite literally stepping down. Your vibration is lowering when you feel that anger, that hatred towards people with a different belief than you. Why are you allowing some random stranger to have that much power over you? That doesn't happen when you put in the work inside. When you love yourself and you know yourself and you know your strengths and weaknesses and you're always willing to work on yourself more and more and more to, to get as close to perfection because perfection is impossible, but to get as close to it as possible in this carnation, incarnation, whatever, <laughs> then nothing can phase you because you're so focused on yourself. Not to say you become narcissistic or anything like that. And it's only you, only you, only you. But you know when it's time to give yourself to others and it's time to give yourself to you, to focus on you. All right. I know I talk in circles a little bit, but I'm just I'm just so excited to be back. But we'll go ahead and cut that one off here. Hopefully y'all learned something a little bit about that shallow work stuff. It's very important. Till the next one, y'all. Peace.